You know, last week it was just so awful when we heard the news that after over six months of investigation, the SIU had once again, as they do in 95 plus percent of cases, decided that the shooting death of a black man, Andrew Loku, by police was not worthy of further investigation by the courts, that the cops were going to get off. And we were so devastated. And then, you know, there was also the shooting death of Alex Wetlaw for that week. There was the death of a man in detention that week, immigrant detention that re immigration detention that week. And they were reducing Afrofest from two days to one day. And we were like, no, we can't do this. We can't do this anymore. We, uh, we have to have some sort of resistance. And so we had a festival at Nathan Phillips Square, and at the end of that festival, we announced that we intended to stay at Nathan Phillips Square for as long as we could. The police came with riot gear and, uh, and told us that they were going to arrest us all if we stayed there. And so we said, okay, we'll come to police headquarters then, because that's really who we're protesting anyway. So let's come here, and we're not going to move until the community feels like we've been held and we've been heard. You know, for us, it's not about uh, the demands in order to move. For us, it's about the community. Because one of the things that happens when you hear these types of news affecting your community, when you hear that nobody cares about this black man who was killed in this way, it feels very isolating. It's terrible. Um, it, it really affects your mental well-being. So by setting this up and having a place for the community to come by and express their rage and their feelings, to create art together, uh, to be together, um, we're really creating a space where the community can feel held. And so that's number one, most important. And so when the community feels like this space is no longer the space where we want to express ourselves, then we'll leave. We're, that's not, that is not contingent upon the po po politicians listening to us, the decision makers listening to us. We will keep fighting whether it's in this space or another way but the demands that we are asking for accountability we deserve to know the names of the police officers who are killing our people we deserve to know whether they have a history of negative interactions with the public we deserve to know if they're still on the streets how do we not know if they're still on the streets we should know these things when these types of interactions happen Andrew Loku deserves some sort of compensation from uh, from our politicians. There should be some sort of compensation that is given to his family. He came here as a refugee as from who is escaping a life where he was a child soldier only to be killed here by Toronto police. It's absolutely unconscionable. And he was in the process of trying to get the rest of his family here. Now they don't have all the things that he worked for. And they deserve that. We, we deserve the province to do a complete overhaul of the SIU. That is the system that is supposed to keep the, the police officers accountable when there is wrongdoing. But how is it possible that in 95 plus percent of cases there is no wrongdoing when somebody dies, when there's uh, an allegation of a sexual assault? That doesn't make any sense to us. I think that that means that there's something wrong because when the SIU decides uh, not to clear police officers. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong. It just means that they get to go to court to have a further investigation. You're telling me that 95% of cases don't deserve a further investigation in a court of law? 
I don't think so. Somebody's protecting someone else. That's what's happening here. The system is set up to protect people. Cops know they can act with impunity. Cops know that most of the time there is no consequence for breaking the rules. And that is absolutely unacceptable. And the public needs to know that it's not the politicians and the decision makers who are going to change these things. It's us. It's us. By saying no more business as usual. We're going to be here. We're going to be here. We're going to stay here. We're going to be a thorn in your side until this changes because it's supposed to work for us. Yeah, I think to other communities, please recognize, please recognize and assist us with what's happening. Uh, you know, everything that affects us, it also affects other communities. It really, really does. But what's happening here is we are being affected at a different level, you know. The, let's look at Sammy Yatim, right? He wasn't black, but he's part of the system. Like, what has happened to him is part of the system that affects black people more. But that doesn't mean it doesn't affect other communities. So by supporting us, what we're really doing is supporting everybody in the community. For those of us who have it the, the hardest, if we ameliorate the system for those of us who are affected the hardest, everybody wins. Everybody wins. So please come out and support us and take some action as well. Come by. We, we want people to come by and come by on Saturday at 4 p.m. That's when we're doing our big rally. Thank you. Won't you say his name? Trayvon Martin, say his name. Trayvon Martin.